It's me great pleasure to be here today in Kuwait at the opening of the first regional IP law enforcement conference for Middle East and North Africa. The reality is that today goods in abundance travel all over the globe, travel through all countries, through all borders, and indeed through Kuwait in ever-increasing volumes. We know for a fact that after the manufacturing, after the packaging, after the loading, the delivery, comes the moment when each of these products will reach a consumer somewhere in the world and enter into their daily lives. Amongst these consumers will be those that we care most about. They will be members of our families. They will be members of our neighbourhoods. They will be our friends. They will be our citizens of our countries. We have to ask ourselves a very simple question. How can we know that the goods that they are accessing and are buying and using are authentic? How can we be sure they are legally produced? How can we be sure that they are not in fact high quality counterfeits that have been distributed and imported at the hands of organised crime? And it's the answer to these questions that the Secretary General and that Interpol has been working together in partnership with national police and stakeholders for many years. In that time, we maintain a very simple resolve, a very simple objective, and that is to ensure that counterfeit, illicit and pirated goods are kept away from unsuspected consumers, that the organised crime groups that are involved in trafficking these goods are brought to justice and that we keep safe our consumers, especially the old, the infirm, and our children. Interpol has been concerned with fighting traffic in illicit goods and counterfeit for many years, and as the largest international police organization, our primary concern is to protect human life. And that is the principle also within the core of the Crime Directorate at Interpol that I run. Interpol knows how to fight crime internationally, but it knows it cannot be done alone. It can only be done in partnerships. We have in our program a comprehensive approach, a comprehensive approach that involves a full range of services, including capacity building, training, operations. Our legal division provides institutional and legal support to governments and our communication branch raises awareness to the public. And we're proud to do so. I speak of operations spread across all regions of the world. I speak of operations that are interfacing and interacting against multiple product categories involving partners, national police agencies, regulatory agencies, and of course, national customs authorities. In recent times now, Interpol has successfully co coordinated some 24 operations across all corners of the world, in the Middle East, in Asia, in Africa, in the South Americas. These efforts have amounted to some 23,000 law enforcement actions, the dismantling of many organized crime groups, the closure of many counterfeit production factories and distribution networks, and the seizure of over 50 million illicit and counterfeited items. The value of these seizures are now in excess of 500 million US dollars and it grows after each operation it grows increasingly. The operational activity has stimulated national police and allowed Interpol to create a larger presence. 
particularly in Asia, where we have been far more active in the last years, and also here in the Middle East region. It has allowed Interpol to remain relevant as an international law enforcement body, evidencing the support we give to our national police partners in the fight against the organised criminals who are involved in harming society by their activity. We have hosted some 33 training events around the world involving thousands of officers from 80 countries representing all Interpol regions and languages. Law enforcement operations cannot take place in a vacuum. To be effective and eventually lead to convictions and confiscation of proceeds of crime, adequate legal frameworks have to be set up and international cooperational channels also have to be used, such as extradition and mutual legal assistance. The participation of experts from Interpol's Office of Legal Affairs in this conference over the next days aims to provide also a fully integrated operational and legal perspective. This will be done through discussion of case studies and illustrations of how international treaties can be used as practical tools to facilitate the surrender of fugitives an exchange of evidence across borders. Our partnership, of course, includes Kuwait, Kuwait Police and the Ministry of Interior, who just last year signed an agreement with the Secretary General demonstrating Kuwait's commitment to international police cooperation with the signing of formal agreements recognising the Interpol travel document at our headquarters in Lyon. This agreement allows for Interpol's swift deployment of officials in response to any calls for assistance. As was the case in June of last year, when here in Kuwait, officials seized some 20,000 smuggled tramadol tablets, which had been hidden inside counterfeit wheels, counterfeit car parts that had been shipped from another Middle Eastern country. As a result of this, Kuwait used the Interpol's notices to alert all countries in the world of this smuggling technique. And this is very typical of the operations that Interpol has experienced over the many years now, working with, our with over 132 countries in the world. We cons consistently see increasingly elaborate efforts made by criminals to avoid detection. While the goods are being smuggled by one route, labels, materials are smuggled by another route and are later put together. Take for example pharmaceutical products. Most citizens around the world will understand why it's important to fight against the counterfeit of medicines. And here again we rely on partnerships. Partnerships with the private sector, partnerships with law enforcement. I must emphasize that the medical product and counterfeiting of pharmaceutical crime unit within Interpol is treated differently from Interpol's intellectual property crime generally. But the consumption of medical products by consumers directly affects health and well-being of citizens. And again, it's organized crime who are manipulating this in order to make huge amounts of money, which they will invest in other crime areas. During this conference, we will also hear from units dealing with this particular crime area. Ladies and gentlemen, Based on my experience over many years dealing with this crime, with respect to private and public partnerships, the necessity for joint action is greater than ever. We know there are many private sector companies who support expertise and cooperation is needed in the fight against this crime type. And Interpol recognises their value. 
and we appreciate their offers of working in cooperation. We are confident that this conference and the networking opportunities it brings will further cement the existing cooperations that we have. In conclusion, Interpol's commitment to combating transnational organized counterfeiting and piracy is accelerating and consistently delivering tangible benefits. The traffic in illicit goods and counterfeit is providing proactive international leadership, innovation, and is enjoying success as a result of the partnerships, the very strong partnerships that we have. Nevertheless, there is still an urgent need for all of us to respond to this global problem. I ask everybody here to cooperate with Kuwait Police, with Interpol, with all national enforcement bodies to identify how we can work collectively, how we can collectively achieve even greater wins at disrupting the counterfeiters and the pirates who are dealing in this terrible crime and how we can bring them together to justice. Together we can and should reinforce this message, the message that piracy and counterfeiting are serious crimes and that we will vigorously investigate, prevent and prosecute wherever we find it. Thank you very much.